this computer set all set one minute to go and we're, we're set Just swing up away. There we go. There's a few seconds till eight o'clock. I'll wait till exactly eight o'clock and I'll get started. Okay, guys, it's eight o'clock. So we're going to be starting exactly on time today and finishing exactly on time. Uh, thank you for coming out and obviously taking the time out to be on this webinar. Um, my name is Nathan Ellington, Platinum 2000 member in iMarkets Live. This is primarily for the iMarkets Live team, our team um, in Manchester, in London, in Lithuania, in Hong Kong, everywhere in Nigeria. We have many, play many, many, many of our team in different parts of the world and uh, they're logging in. And um, you know, listening in and, and learning together. That's that's what we have. We have the power. What we have is to be able to learn together and help each other to succeed. So this is what I'm doing. I'm taking my time out today and tomorrow, eight till nine again, where I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit of the knowledge that I've learned from my markets live. And then, you know, those people who don't know anything, they're going to get to know a little bit about what we what we're doing. And maybe just understand even if it's a few things. If a few things are over your head and a few things that you understand, then that's perfect. So, okay. So, um, let's uh, take it on from here. Right. So, first thing I'm going to be going through is intro to Forex. Let me just take my picture off my screen because I can't actually see my screen properly. One second. There we go. Move that out of the way. Okay. So, what is Forex? Many people don't know what Forex is, so I'm just going to break that down for you. It's an abbreviation for foreign exchange. Now, if a tourist on a tropical island decides to exchange one currency for another, a Forex trade has taken place. Now, all foreign exchange transactions involve two currencies. In every instance, one currency is being bought and simultaneously another currency is being sold. So, for example, uh, in this case here that you see, somebody who is from America, they're going to be buying the Great British Pound and they'll be selling the US dollar. Somebody who's from England will be selling the, uh, the Great British Pound and buying the US dollar. Very simple. We all know that when we go to the airport, we do the same thing. Now, Forex, why is it so liquid? Because it's the f largest financial market in the world. Now, every single business, every single transaction pretty much involves some kind of foreign exchange going on. So, for example, if you went on to Amazon and wanted to buy something like a mobile phone or something, and it's coming from Japan. Now, behind the scenes, what's happening? You're paying with pounds, but it's actually getting exchanged into yen. Same thing in America. If you want to buy something from America, for example, I bought a basketball net quite a few years ago. Now, there weren't any very good basketball nets in England, so I wanted to buy the American, the, you know, the authentic ones. So I went and bought it there. Now, I paid in pounds, but it, obviously it got to that company in dollars. So a foreign exchange is happening in pretty much every single transaction that's happening in the world. That's why over $5.3 trillion every single day is exchanged. So you can understand why many people want to get involved in this market. Now, if you take a look at this here, you've got the New York Stock Exchange. A lot of people, when you say Forex, people just already say stock and they think about businesses that, that, are, you know, that are on the market and, and you can buy shares in them and, and they go up and down. Now, businesses, they only generate 22 billion per day. So think about how long that would take them to get to 5.3 trillion. It's like nine months. The, what um, the Forex does in a day it takes the stock exchange about nine months to do. So you can imagine how big it is, well, how large it is compared to any other market in the world. You can think of anything. There's no other market larger than the Forex industry. Now, <clears throat> who's involved in Forex? The interbank inter market. Now, they're the ones 
who set the pace for the market and they determined the exchange rates, what you see when you go to, for example, I went into Tesco the other day and I saw the currency exchange. You see them rates. They're the ones who determine them rates, okay? And then you have the large commercial companies. So the mega companies, massive, massive companies who are doing business on an international scale. So what they do, and they're constantly buying something from a different country or many different countries. So that affects the value of the, their currency. So that's why um, uh, when they do it on that bigger scale, it affects them when we look what we're looking at in the market uh, a lot more than you know what we do. Now you've got the governments who are also their businesses and they're just like the large commercial companies. They move large amounts of money constantly to different governments, to different businesses. They invest into different things just so they can keep afloat. That's the way they make their money as well. Now the central banks, they affect the forex market when they adjust the interest rates. So I think it was about two weeks ago, we was waiting for the interest rates um, to, to see what the results were with the interest rates, whether they were going to go up, whether they're going to go down or stay the same for, for the UK. And, it, and it, it was actually, it actually ended up staying the same that day. But I was actually looking at the market now that I know about Forex. I was looking at that, waiting for that news to come out to see if they hiked the exchange rates. I knew the pound would get stronger, but they didn't hike it and the pound stayed around the same. So I didn't make much money on that particular um, event that happened. Now you have the spot market, the retail traders and the speculators. People like us, we're speculating whether the market's going to go up or down based on events, economical events. Things happen in a different country, like Donald Trump talks about another country in China or something. And now we're not going to do business with you. Then the Chinese, um, the, the money in China, I can't even remember what it's called. But basically that money goes down in value because then there's no longer doing as much business. It means the value is going to go down. So loads of things affect what happens in the market. People like us investors, like put money in or day traders, People speculate, we don't really affect the market that much. So that's why we're at the bottom of this chain. But um, obviously you can make a lot of money no matter where you are in this chain, as long as you know what you're doing. Now, the advantage of Forex trading is there's little to no commissions. So commissions just vary on your broker. A broker is like a bank for trading. So you have a bank for money where you have a debit card and you put money in and take out as you wish. Same for, 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 for trading. Uh, did I just say trading twice? Maybe I did. You have a bank for money and you have a bank for trading. Brokers that we have is similar to having, you know, Barclays, HSBC, etc. Now we have also banks which are governed by um, the proper um, people who actually regulate uh, the brokers, make sure that obviously that you're safe and your money's in the right place and you can access it whenever you want. You can deposit, withdraw whenever you like. Now, there's no fixed lot size. So that means there's no fixed amount that you have to spend. So, you know, 10 years ago, I would say 10, 15 years ago with Forex, you actually had to have at least 100,000 minimum in your account to be able to trade. So I remember back in the day watching um, a movie called Trading Places with Eddie Murphy in it. Now, I remember w watching him. He was like poor and he met these really rich guys in suits going to do trading. And then he ends up working with them or working for them and then ends up working with them. Now, he knew that that was never something that he could get involved in because he didn't have the money to get started. Now, it was a totally different world for him. And that's how it used to be 15, 10, 15 years ago for people like us. The average person could not even get involved in Forex. But with the trade, with the technology that's changed so much today, it's now made it possible for the average person to get involved and not have to spend so much money. Now, that means you could start with even an account as small as £25, although it's not recommended because it means that you can't really make a lot of money that quickly. But, you know, you can, however, do that. Now, low transaction costs. So what does it cost to actually put a trade on? Like, the, what do the brokers actually charge? It's not a lot. Very, very minimal. Um, many, the brokers vary um, slightly, but it's minimal. Now, the market is open 24 hours a day and five days a week. So whether you're busy in the daytime, you can trade in the nighttime. Whether you're busy in the nighttime, you can trade in the daytime. Why? It's because there's time zones in the world. Now, if you look about Europe, actually, let's start to the left. 
you're looking at America, Canada, their market, that opens up, okay? Now, when they close, actually, let's start from the beginning. Europe, the pound, the euro, all of that, that opens up at 7 a.m., for example. And when they finish doing trading, or when it gets to midday, America's now waking up, and their 7 a.m. is like our 12, 1 o'clock depending on uh, you know, the daylight saving time. So when that market opens, when ours closes, theirs is open. Now when USA finishes, guess what opens? The Far East opens. So there's always an overlap in different markets that are opening and closing. So this means the market's always moving throughout Monday to Friday and you can take advantage of that. Now leverage. In, uh, in Forex, you can control large amount of money with small capital. It allows you to keep your risk management tight with nice profit potential. Now, I'll explain that in a bit. Uh, I'll go through that a little bit later. But that me, uh, well, with this industry, you know there's high liquidity. There's constant high volumes of money being exchanged on a daily basis. So with 5.3 trillion being thrown up in the air every single day, you know, to catch even 0.00001% of that is a hell of a lot of money. So just man imagine what I understood that if I just master this industry, this business, but this industry of Forex, if I master it and just learn to take a little bit a day, that's much more than you can make on a normal job even. So, you know, it just takes time. You have to become, you know, good. But it's actually 10% skill and 90% mindset. So the bit that you need to control the most is your mind. That is what's more important than the, the skill. What I show you today is pretty much a simple basic strategy, which I'm going to show you how you can actually become consistently profitable, but then it's about controlling yourself, not being too greedy. Okay. So again, you can get in and get out of a trade at any time. If you see the market going, not in your direction and you want to get out, you just close and change the money and close that, that money and make sure you don't lose any more. Or if you're making money, make sure that you, you obviously you're thinking, you know, I'm happy with this amount. I'll stop there. You can do that too. Now, here's a few currencies that you've probably, your countries that you can see that you know of. Now, the symbol on the right is what represents the currency that they're using in their country. So the euro is EUR, the dollar, USD. As you can see, the Canadian dollar is a CAD. The only one that doesn't really follow the, 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 the letters is the Switzerland, which is CHF. Okay, so it's got Frank in it. It's got F, but you know, what's CH compared when, when you're looking at um, Switzerland. That's the only one which really doesn't connect with me in my head straight away. So all the rest, you probably, by looking at it, you'd know exactly what that is. AUD, Australian, JPY, JAP. You know, you can understand all of that. Now, for an exchange, when you go to the airport, you see these all over the place. Okay. Now, when a person wants to travel to a foreign country, they will need to exchange their money for a local currency of their destination. They usually make this exchange at the airport. For example, if someone's heading to America, they would be swapping the Great British Pound for the USD. Now, the focus is on pounds and pence. That's what we deal with. How much pounds have you got? How much pennies have you got? Let's change it for the dollars and cents, okay? That makes sense. Hopefully you're following here. If anyone's not following, please, if anyone's, um, if I go too quick for anyone, please just message in the chat so I see a message and I can click on it and have a read of it as I'm carrying on, okay? Now, what I'm saying is the focus is on pounds and pence in, when it's in uh, the pounds. And when it's dollars, it's dollars and cents, okay? That's how we see it as the normal everyday person, average person on the street. Now, let's take a look. Uh, if we were to change money and trying to make a profit just this way. Very, very difficult, but let's show you how it works. Now, let's say, I'm hoping this is doing the job. Why is it not moving? One second. Why is it not moving? Okay. So let's say in May, the pound to the dollar, for every pound, you get $1.34. Let's say you went to change that money back in June. There's a slight difference in the price. It's now $1.33. The dollar has got stronger. It's got closer to the pound value. So as the dollar is going down, it means 
no, no, the dollar. So the amount of the, you got one pound to a dollar, that would be exactly the same. So the more dot money you need in dollars means obviously the weaker the dollar's getting. So the closer it's getting to the pound, the stronger the dollar is getting. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, what you can see here is the difference between the, the May price and the June price is one cent. You can see that difference, okay? That's because the focus is on the second digit after the point, okay? Now, I'm right in saying for every pound that I exchanged in May, that means when I exchange it back in June, I would make that one cent profit for every pound, okay? So because there's a pound difference. So imagine this. If you spent a pound in May, you changed it in June, you'd have one pound, one pence. Okay, if you spent 10 pound, you would have 10 pounds, 10 pence. If you spent 100 pounds, you'd have 101 pounds. So you'd have one pound profit. If you changed 1,000 pounds, you'd have made 10 pound profit. Now, as you can see, you can't make much unless you have like a million that you changed in May and changed it back in June. Now, obviously, not many of us don't have that kind of money. That's why Forex is here. Now, this is how you can leverage and make, take advantage. Now, the focus currently is on the second digit after the point, as you can see. That's what we all know in general. Okay, so that's the pence. Okay, now in Forex, in the Forex market, the focus is not on the second digit after the point. We focus on the fourth digit after the point. This is the smallest movement in price the market can make. The term percentage in the point or you're probably going to hear many people talking about pips, catching pips here, catching pips there. This is all we're talking about. Um, it's, it's the name used when calculating these small, small movements in the market. It's actually the smallest movement the market can make. So let me give an example of how that works. Now, this is how you know it. But imagine you could actually look at a much smaller movements in the market. Now we're talking about these digits, okay? Imagine you added zeros to it, and that means it could have a slight movement. You probably don't, you'll never even see it in the, in the airport, but we see it on the markets because we've magnified what we're, what we're putting our pounds on, okay? So take a look at this. This is what we're, we're, we're focusing on, the fourth digit, okay? Now, now imagine again, you're at $1.34, so as a Forex trader, watch what happens. The difference between $1.34, what's one movement down for us? It's $1.33.999, okay? Then the next movement down, $1.33.998, then 997, then 996, 995, 994, 993, 992, 991, then 990. That there, I've just showed you one whole pip movement from $1.34 exactly to one pip down, okay? Now, the last digit that you see is a percentage of the pip, okay? So for each movement in that is like zero point, uh, that's like uh, one tenth of a pip, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, and so on, until you get to the whole pip. And every single number that that nine moves, that's one pip movement, okay? So as you can understand, the next one, is actually 10 pips, okay? So what you can see here is 99 pips left to go to get to $1.33.000. So let me give you another example of that. So as you can see here, for each little movement that's happening, if you place the pound on that, for each tiny movement, because I said it's one tenth, so it'll be one tenth of a pound that moves until it reaches one whole pip, that's where you've reached one pound. Hopefully that makes sense and you're following. You might need to rewatch this again to kind of understand that. But um, basically, it's just the smaller movements and we're putting our money on the smaller movements that happen. So let's take a look, like I said. So how many pips is there difference between $1.34 and $1.33? 100 pips, as you can see, okay? So if we placed... Imagine, look, this is the forex profit now. So if we placed a pound on every time that happened, every single pip that moved, we would have made 100 pounds. Play 10 pound, now make 1,000 pound. Place 100 pound, you make 10,000 pound. Put 1,000 pound, you're making 100,000 pound on that small movement that just happened where you would have made one pence. In the normal everyday world, 
in the forex market you can see why we're talking about leverage here you're leveraging being able to make much more money on the markets okay now let's move on now reading a quote when you look at this quote they look at the picture first you've got gbp usd okay um so this is the gbp the pound versus the dollar now the base currency is always the first currency that you see on the left and the quoted currency so the price that you see the quote price is always the second I don't think anyone can hear you. Thank you, thank you. Can you hear me now? Everyone can hear me now? Yeah, yeah, everyone can hear me. All right, perfect, perfect. All right, so sorry about that. Uh, I just want to re go over that again. So you would buy, um, this is the GBP USD. The base currency is on the left always, um, and the quoted currency is on the right. Well, I was saying you would press buy um, if you if you wanted if you expected the base currency to, to increase, and you would press sell if you expected the base currency to decrease. Now, what I was saying was because they're against each other, if one's getting stronger against the other, the other one's getting weaker. Okay, let me just um, mute everybody. I need to mute everybody here. One second. I can hear everybody. Right, there we are. Right. As I was saying, if one currency is getting stronger, the other one's getting weaker. If the USD is getting stronger, the GBP is going down. So you can actually make money either way because you're either buying the GBP or you're buying the USD. But instead of making it um, difficult for people, what they've done is they've said the GBP USD, you either buy or sell. But in reality, you're either, like I said, if you press buy, you're buying the GBP. If you press sell, you're buying the USD. Okay. So just understand that for a second and let that, that sink in. But basically, you can't sell what you don't have. So you're always buying one and obviously, uh, or buying the other. As one's getting weaker, one's getting stronger. So if the news comes out, for example, on the, and the interest rates have gone up for the pound, guess what's going to happen? You press buy, it's going to go up. But let's say, for example, the USD got strong, that means the GBP was, would go down versus it. So you'd expect to start selling here. So anytime the USD is getting strong, you expect the GBP USD to be a sell. Simple as that. If the, the news on the USD is weak, you expect the GBP USD to be a buy. Simple as that. Now, just to give you an example here, uh, you can see the numbers at the top there. You see the lot sizes. So you've got um, 10 pence a pip on 533 pips being caught. And you've got a pound a pip and you've got 10 pound for, for every pip. So let's say you press buy at that position where you see the buy sign there. And you got in there, the price rose and rose and rose and you got out right at the top where it says close. If you decided to put 10p on that, you would make um, 53 pounds. Now, if you had a pound on that, 
for every single pip that moved up and you closed out there, you'd make 533 pounds. And as you can see, if you had 10 pounds for every single pip that it moved up, you'd make 5,330 pounds. So depending on your account balance, you can decide how much you want to place on every pip. Now, obviously what we work on is between two and 5% of your account you want to place on each pip because you don't want to obviously put too much on each pip because the market can move a lot. So you always want to have a small amount so you never blow your account. And so you're always moving nicely, never worried about what, what's happening. Okay. So remember, if you're in a forex market and you go too high, this is what I mean about mindset. If you try to gamble and put too much on, your, on, on every pip and your account is, let's say, a hundred pounds account and you're putting 10 pound per pip, it only has to move 10 pips and your whole account is closed. Okay. So there's no point doing that. So if you was to work on 2%, you're never going to really blow your account. You need to, I'll explain uh, that later, but you, you basically need the market to move a hell of a lot before it closes out your account. And that wouldn't happen because we have parameters in place to place your stop loss and take profits. Now, the, 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 the three pillars of analysis. Now you've got technical analysis. What we're gonna, I'm going to be showing you in a moment where we basically, we look at the price movement. What's happened in the history? What trends have happened? Where's the market going? What's it been doing before? What patterns is it, is it making? Certain patterns the market's moving in. Where's the support? Where's it hitting and stopping and then going up and stopping? Where are them areas? We're going to identify these areas. Where are the zones where it stopped? Because they're the areas where people are buying and selling. So we got to identify where people are doing this so then we can buy and sell in them same areas too and make profits just like them. Now that's technical analysis where history always tends to repeat itself. So if something happens, interest rates go up, the market's going to do the same thing it did when the interest rates went up before. If anything, if there's a terrorist attack, something's going to happen. If there's Brexit, something's going to happen. If there's anything, certain things that happen, if they've happened before, they tend to happen again exact same way. Now, fundamental analysis, that's news what I'm talking about. So what I just said there, now that all, that's, that's really like initial movements in the market, like spikes, quick movements over a short period of time, like half an hour, then the market gets back to the normal way of a technical way. Now, sentimental, so how other traders are reacting to the market. So they see what other traders are doing, they're like, wait a minute, loads of people are doing this, so I'm going to do this. So this is what happens. So these are the things that affect the market as well. Okay. Now there's a few rules, um, a few simple rules that I wanted to go through. And then I'm going to show you a bit about just exactly how we go through um, taking money out of the market. Now you always want to trade on a demo account until you have a profitable strategy. Okay. So if you can open a trade from a Monday and trade throughout the week to the Friday and be profitable by that Friday, and being actually put in trades on that you know why you're doing it, then I believe you're ready to go, okay? You do not want to trade when you're stressed, emotional, or distracted. And you want to stick to one pair in the beginning and very gradually expand out into a second or third. Otherwise, you'll become a jack of all trades and a master of none. You don't want to be that kind of trader. The focus is to master one pair, know its movements, know what it tends to do when certain things happen, know how far it tends to go and just master it. Understand what it's going to do more times than not and you're going to be a winner most of the time. Now, you also got to have patience. One of the things is important to have patience because sometimes you think the market's going to do something. It could take a week for that market to do what you thought it was going to do. Okay, so the market doesn't happen to, ha to move very quickly all the time. S some pairs move very fast. Some pairs move slower than others. Now, one thing is like a car. If you get inside a car and you start driving, am I right to say the longer you're in the car, the further distance you can possibly get? Same with this. If you put a trade on at 5 p.m., there's a, only pretty much a certain amount of distance that trade can go up or down. Okay, The longer you leave it on, the further it can go. So if you want to make loads of money on one trade, let's say you're a busy person and you want to just 
analyze the markets in the nighttime and you want to put on a trade and then leave it for the following week, you can do that. Okay. If you're a person who really wants to just get in, get out and make quick profits, you can also do that too. If you want to do medium, like throughout the day, there's so many different types of ways to master the market. Okay. And the aim is to be consistent. Rome was not built in a day. It's all, it's, it's very important to just stick to your game plan, have your confirmations and always follow that. If you cannot tick off the confirmations, do not put the trade on. Simple as that. Be like the Venus flytrap. What, what happens with the Venus flytrap? I, I watched a video on this um, through one of the videos on IML TV where they explain like the Venus flytrap, it sits there open. It sits there open and it has three different antennas, like sensors inside. Now, when a fly comes in, it touches the first antenna okay it doesn't shut it stays there open and if within 20 seconds another one of the antennas are touched it closes every time it does the exact same thing stays open touch one touch the other it's gone it eats the fly some flies get away though so they don't catch every single fly but they keep to the same confirmation checklist exact same confirmation Two antennas within 20 seconds, bam, we're closed. If we catch you, we catch you. If we don't, no problem, we'll get the next one. Same with trading. You get your confirmations. If they're on, you tick the boxes, bang, you get in. If you lose the trade, no problem, we go again. Consider losing in trading as like your expenses. Because, you know, you can sit at home, you don't have any expenses, you don't have anything to worry about. All you're doing is trading, trading, trading. And we can have, basically, you just know that you're going to expect to lose some trades as well. Now, remember, like it says, be prepared to lose some trades. Again, there's no failure. If there's no failure, there's no progress. Use your demo and practice a strategy, different strategies. Keep changing it up until you get it right. Keep trying. When you fail, keep trying. The, 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 um, the best thing you can do is fail. If you've ever heard any personal growth teacher talking, they say failure is part of success. If you are not willing to fail, you're not going to get to success. What do you do when you go to the gym and you start doing weights? You push weights until your muscles fail. Then they get stronger and then they're able to kick on. If you didn't push it till it was able to failure, you would not progress. Simple. Now, Stick to trading for people who are new. You want to stick to trading on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday because the market is more predictable on them days. As you get a bit better and better, then you want to, you know, you can move on to the Mondays and Fridays where the market is much more volatile. Now, spend 90% of your time studying and 10% of your time executing because studying is the key to this. And um, like I said, it's not that difficult. It's not as difficult as many people think. Um, getting um, a strategy together, as at least your basic strategy, it doesn't take that long at all. And never forget, trading, like I said, is 90% mental and 10% skill. So with that being said, that's half the presentation uh, out the way. I'm going to go straight onto the markets now and show you how I mark up the charts and what I look for um, according to little bits and pieces that I've learned so far from the IML TV and IML Academy. Now we've got 30 minutes left, so that's perfect, exactly halfway through. So I'm going to stop sharing this one. Uh, wait a minute. Is there any questions on this part first? Then I can, um, is there anyone got any questions? You can unmute yourself and, 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 and ask. And then um, I'm going to move straight on to the next part. Uh, I've just five minutes of question if there's any questions at all. If not, that's great. We can move on. I'm just looking at the, you can either unmute yourself or you can write in the message box. Not a problem. Either way. So any questions, actually, just write them in there and then um, we'll, we'll, um, we'll get to that later. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, so I know there's a lot of things on here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take all these things off. I'm going to look at, this is the NZUSD. Okay, so... With the end of the USD, so what is this? You guys should know this is the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. So where's the price? The price is here, 
six nine you know what let's use one that we were talking about to make it easy and consistent with what we're talking about so let me delete everything off here there's nothing on here okay so this is the pound versus the dollar currently it's at one dollar thirty three five three two so to move up one pip what would that be one dollar thirty three five oh it's already gone down one pip so um basically if it's at one dollar thirty three five zero zero one dollar thirty three five one zero would be one pip movement up if i pressed buy and it went up one pip i and i put a pound on that that would be one pound floating profit i could press close and that's my money now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you what i do if you've got a notepad and pen um feel free to write it out but remember i do have a recording so you just request that if you want the recording but then um, basically what i do first and foremost i look on the daily time frame because this is like me going out of space and look at the, at the whole of the earth i'm seeing it as a whole and then i'm going to come in closer and then i'm going to see the more detail then i'm going to come in even more closer and see even more detail and then i'm going to get even closer and then i'm going to precisely put on my trades so this is what I do. I want to see the general overall direction. The only way to look at that is through looking at it on a daily time frame. So it's way, look, this is going back to 2013, okay? So if I was to look at this, for example, on the hourly, I'm not going back to 2013. This is only going back to April, May here, April. So the, the screen can't show me everything that's going on. So it's better to look on here on the daily, okay? Daily time frame, I can see that the market is doing something. Let's see. To me, that looks like it's uptrending, okay? Um, at the, it was uptrending, but then it's broke the trend. What do I mean by that? So I'll put a line here and say, okay, the market basically started moving up from here. I'll pull my, my uh, trend line and just drag it up till it touches all these lines, okay? Let's take a look at that. Okay, I would say that's pretty much a line. Um, you don't have to be precise, totally precise, but what you can say is, look, the market was kind of like respecting a certain line for some reason. It kept coming down, touching, coming up, touching down, coming up, touching down. And now what it's done is it's broken that line. So now I'm thinking, okay, this must be a downtrend now. Okay, so I put my line here and I put that there. It's a bit of a steep one, but yeah, it's on the way down. Okay, so let's go back in time somewhere like here. We know it's an uptrend. So let's focus on this area here. What is this? 2017, when 2017? Let's go March 2017, okay? I'm going to go from here. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do everything on the four hourly because if I go back to March 2017 on on here and I press this replay button, I can't change the time frame again. So I'm just gonna go back to March 2017 and hide everything. So we're looking at an uptrend in market. Let me make this a bit tighter. Here we go into March. What is this March? No, it's January. Let's just go here. This is about this is March here, yeah. So okay, so if I did replay and I close out everything that happened here, okay. So let's take this line. Let's actually use this as a line. Say, look, I've drawn this because I saw this happen. Okay. Now, what would I be looking for first and foremost is areas where the market came down, stopped, and turned around. Okay. So some major areas where the market did that. So I would put a line in here. What you do is you click on this line here. Please close the door. Can you close the door, please? Thank you. Um, you click on horizontal line or Alt H. So what I'll do is I'll put, oh, sorry, one second. All right, so what you do is put the line here. Why? Because the market came down, touched, came down, touched. It's just pushed through, but it stayed there. Here, it's come down and touched as well. If I go back across to history, I can see it's also come and touched here a few times as well. So I would say definitely that's happened. OK, 
Guys, give me one second. I just need to quickly get these kids back into bed. They're playing around. So give me a second. Okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Okay, so let's just make sure there's nothing in the chat. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm currently drawing. So first thing I'm looking for is my support zones, and my support and resistance lines first and foremost, okay? That's the most important thing I want to draw in, number one, okay? So actually, what was number one? The direction the market was moving on a large scale. And then I put in my line just so I know when, once I zoom in where my line is, where, where I'm expecting the market to go up from. Okay, so I expect it to keep touching this line. If it breaks this line and stays underneath it and carries on down from here past this support, then obviously I'd say it's now changed its tune. It's no longer on the uptrend. Okay, but right now the market went up, come and touched, and it's going to go up. Okay, so. I'm looking for another area, so I put my marker somewhere like here. I say, you know what? I think that's an area, possibly maybe even there. I think even there is better. Why? Because the market came down and touched here, touched here many times, okay? What you can do also is click on this here and change the candles to lines. You can see it a bit easier. And you can say, okay, where else did the market touch? Is this an area? Is this an area? That looks like an area, but I think there's possibly another one before that somewhere. I'd say that's possibly one there. Looks like the market's come and touched there quite a bit. Or maybe it's there. Let's go back in history. Yep, you can see, look, look what happened there. Just go back in history and see whether it happened before. You see the market came from up here, it came down, touched. You've seen it's come up and down in here. So you can see that's an area. You can just look with the naked eye. Where's the market actually gone and touched many times? It's gone up, it's gone down, it's gone up. You know, so here, I would say that's possibly an area. We can touch it up later. And then find another area just above, say about there, okay? Let's just give that. So when I look, there's like 100 pips between there, 100 pips between there, and 100 pips between there. How do I know? It's 1.21, 1 1.22, 1 1.23, 1.24. So it's literally around about 100 pips or so. It's usually between 80 to 120 pips or so. Especially with the GBP market, it moves quite a lot. So it moves quite fast. It moves quite high. Um, so I'd say like there's another one there. So there's my areas. I'm, I'm drawing them in because I don't know what's going to happen next, for example, here. So I want to be able to have an idea of where the market's going to go to and stop because it stopped there before. Okay. So that's exactly why I'm drawing these lines in. I'm going to go back now to the candles. I'm looking here now and I'm saying, okay, so let's see what happens with the market. Okay. This is what you want to be doing back testing. This is called back testing. You want to be doing this all the time. Um, so you're testing your strategy. What's your strategy? I'm just telling you what my strategy is. I see the news is coming up here. So this is major. When the news is coming up, for example, this is going to happen at 4 p.m., this one here. Um, you can see the market's going to, this is going to be, at, so I don't know about what it means, but what I do know is that that red, means it's it's major for the, the, the pound. So it's going to push somewhere up or down, and I don't know. So I don't want to be part of that. So what I want to do is wait until that happens and then get in afterwards. So I'm reacting to what happens. Never try to anticipate in the market. Always react to what's going to happen, okay? So what actually happens, sorry. So right now, I've drawn in my lines. I'm actually going to... Just draw in some zones quickly. Um, actually, 
for sake of time, I'm not going to draw in zones. I'm just going to leave in the lines. I'm going to work with this, okay? Just what I do uh, at the moment. So the market, I was saying, is on the uptrend. Let's see what happens. Each candle uh, represents four hours, okay? So the market's going up. So what you want to do is also draw circles in the areas where the market turned around. So you notice the market turned around there, okay? The market also turned around there. So what you could do, you could draw a circle there. You just want to draw circles everywhere the market turned around. You could draw one there and one there if you want to, but I'll just leave it as it is, is that as one big one there. Now, if the market, I would say, goes above here, it's now definitely an uptrending market. And we know it's an uptrend because we saw this is happening. So let's take a look now what happens next. So the market is coming to this time, look. The time happened and it pushed up because of the news. The news at this time happened. What time was that? 9, p 9 a.m. The market came out with this news. Okay. Job openings. And this happened. Bang. The market went from $1.22524. Let's see where it went. $1.22524 all the way up to here. And that's $1.23679. That's over 100. That's 113 pips. Okay. So if you had a pound on that, you'd make 113 pounds if you decided to put a pound on that. But imagine you put a pound on it and it dropped that way. You would also be 113 pounds down unless you put a stop loss somewhere where you say, you know what, if it goes 30 pounds the wrong way, I'm going to close out, okay? Or 10 pounds the wrong way, 5 pounds the wrong way, whatever. You can choose how much the wrong way it goes, you close out. Okay, that's the beauty of having this. And you can also, once your trade is up a little bit, you can also move that, that marker to no, no loss whatsoever and leave it to carry on up. So it's amazing what you can do with this. Um, I'm loving it. So anyway, let's wait and see where the market goes to. Usually the market's going to go to one of these lines or in and around these areas because usually I draw a zone. I draw something like this. I'll draw like a zone like here. I'll draw a zone like that and say that's my area. Yeah, if the ball, if, if the, um, the ball, if the, um, the candle goes inside any of these areas or touches these areas, these are my cues to buy or sell. Okay, but since the market's on the uptrend, I want to catch the large movements. The large movements on an uptrending market is always on a buy, okay? Because what the market tends to do is it goes up a long way, it retraces slightly, then goes up a long way. Retraces slightly, goes up a long way. So that's an uptrending market. A downtrending market is what? The exact opposite. Goes down a long way, retraces a little bit. Down a long way, so you want to catch the long ones, okay? And where do you want to enter the market? The most, the perfect entry points are these circles that you're drawing. So the, 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 that's what you're looking for. So what you want to do is become a master at entering the market at these circles. But the thing is, you don't know the future. So what we're going to try to do right now is try and find a way of entering at the circles, okay? I'm going to show you something that I know, um, that I've been learning. So is, is, that, is that turning around? Not really. Not really turning around. So look what it's done. It's turned around at this line that I put in. Why? Because it's happened before. Okay? So now that's an area where it's turned around. That's my zone. That's why that's a good area to buy or sell. Okay? Where is this market going to go back down towards? What I would do right here is I would find out Usually, there's a number called 61.8% retracement. So as the market goes up, it has its low and it has its high. How far back will it retrace before it carries on up? For some reason, the market tends to go 61.8% retracement backwards before it goes forwards. And if it's anywhere in and around these areas that I've drawn, I'm going to put my buy on that area. So what I would do here, I draw here come right up to the line where it actually stopped and turned around. And I would set a buy pretty much at this line here because this is my floor. This is my floor. That's my ceiling. 
at the moment, this is the floor and this is the ceiling because the market is in between these two. When the market pushes through into here, if it retouches us here, that means it's a ceiling and then that's a floor. Okay. When it, wherever the market is in between two areas, the top is the ceiling and the bottom is the floor. You also heard of it. You'll hear the words support resistance. Okay. And the only way this is no longer support is if it breaks through and comes back and touches and then carries on down. If it breaks through and then comes back in, it's still the support. You still re um, use that as a support. It's only if it goes down, comes up and touches the line and then carries on down, you know that now that is the newfound resistance ceiling. And this is the newfound floor. Okay. But right now we're looking at the uptrend. So here's the floor. Here's the ceiling. This is going down. I would say let's put a buy. A buy is also long and a sell is short. So you do a long position on a buy and I would look at entering the market on this line and going to where this 61.8 is. Here as my, my um, take profit, 342 pips. Because we're looking at it on a bigger time frame, uh, time frame, I'm looking to catch a lot more pips, which means it will take a little bit longer than catching maybe 50 or 100 pips, okay? So let's take a look at this. I put my stop loss here at 100 pips, for example, a few pips below the last line here where you can see, actually, I put it just below here. I say about 120 pips stop loss, and I'm looking to catch 342 pips. Now, here's something that you might not know about. If you were to click in here, my account size is 1,000 uh, pounds. And my percent that I'm going to be using is 2%. Okay. So what it does is it shows that you're losing 20 pounds. Look, there's 980 there. But if it hits my take profit, I've made 55 pounds. That's how it works. The shorter your stop loss is, the more money you're going to make because you can place more money uh, on the trades. Um, obviously, I'll go into that in more detail as you want to know. So the, the tighter you make this, the more money you're going to make. Let's say I say 100%. Now it's only um, 100 pips or so. So now it means I'll make a bit more. So let's see what happens. Will it go down or will it carry on up? Sometimes it just carries on up and you miss the trade. But remember what I'm saying, I'm trying to catch the area where the market touches and goes. It stops and then turns around. That area where I can draw that circle. Okay, so what it did it ended up coming down to this floor, stopping at my floor, and then now it's come up to this floor. Okay, so this is an area where it's come. Okay, so let's see what happens now. So all we're doing now is all as soon as it finds its new high, so okay, I missed it, but I did get the direction right. Okay, I didn't make this trade. It didn't catch, but it's fine. So now the market's up here. Now we go to the last low. Uh, this was the last high, then this is a low, then it's created a higher high, and then a low, which is higher than that low. So on the way up, um, the highs, there's higher highs and higher lows. On the way down, there's lower highs and lower lows. I'm going to go through that in a second. Okay, so you can see this here area was the area of, um, this is a high there uh, and there. Uh, and then it created another low down here. So what I'll do is I'll draw a little circle there. And then it's now created another high, I would say. That's a high. It stopped there. Okay. So is it going to come back down and touch here and go up? Or is it going to carry on down? Let's take a look. It's gone down now. We're expecting it to come back down somewhere by here. So this is, again, a lot of movement. But it's hit the floor and it's coming up. So there's, there's, there's one other rule you can use. Now you can just use the basic strategy of if the market pushes out of um, the line, just aim to buy to the next line. If the market pushes down from here, aim to sell to the next line. It's as simple as that. Remember, guys, I'm only going over a few um, basic parts, bits and pieces here. But it's just hopefully it will help you with lining up your market, uh, lining up your charts and putting things in the right place. So you can see it came down to here. Okay. Now you've got your high, you've got your low. Okay. What's going to happen next? 
right will that push it's pushed up i would expect this market let me make it a bit bigger for you guys i would expect this now to go up to this line here or even beyond because it's pushed up yes it did it came up and touched so you could have got in there but i knew the risk to reward ratio wouldn't be too good if i got in here it's too high and i was going to there it's not really much to make and you got your stop loss just under here yeah it wouldn't mean good enough because you have to have at least you don't want to risk more than what your reward is your potential reward is okay so let's move on here it's yeah now that there it's pushed down but again like i said i don't want to i don't want to be selling in a buyer's market okay so i just want to wait because you always always want to be buying now is that turned around All right, so we've now got a new high and a new low. Okay. So you just want to continually draw these, these lines. And you're saying, okay, so the market is coming down. Is it coming down short term to here? Where is it going to turn around and go up from? So we can see the high and the low. So what I would do is I'll see, okay, where is the market going to go to? Actually, that's the wrong way. Sorry. I believe the market, it's got to come back somewhere down here first before it goes up. So it's going down. It's hit that ceiling. It's probably going to go and touch that floor. So this is what usually happens. Let's see. It's coming down. And it's going back up. But it's got to come back, come and touch here sometime at some point. But in, in the case of wanting to catch some of these, you can get in on a short term on a sell and on a short term on the buy. So, see that happens. I'd get in on a buy to the next area, the next zone. I would say the next zone possibly be somewhere like here. But again, it's such a big movement. It's very difficult to get involved here because it's halfway towards. You want to be getting in really somewhere about here. And, and catching the majority of the trade up to here. So the GBP USD is, is, is actually a market for experienced traders. You don't really want to get involved with the G, GBP USD when you're brand new because the market moves very, very fast. Okay. So how far back is this one going to retrace before it goes up? I'd have a look at this and say, let me put my retracement in. 61.8 is around here. Let's see if, I could, if we could get in on a trade here and go up to there. Okay, stop loss will be there. Let's see if it, what happens here. Market comes down, it touches this floor and pushes up. Okay, so here's a potential trade. The market's touched the floor and pushed up. You could get yourself in on a buy from here, aiming for this ceiling here with a stop loss just underneath here. Again, you've got 1.22, so you would have had to get in before that happened, okay? You're aiming for up here. Why are you aiming for up here? Because this is the ceiling, and this is the floor, okay? So if the market goes underneath this floor, possibility is it's not going to go past this line here, okay? You can, you've also set a trade if it comes down to here it will activate this trade okay so there's two trades here one trade that you've opened straight away with a stop loss here if that closes out no problem it will catch this one and you'll definitely make it up to here so let's see what happens next so you've got in you're in on that trade and it's hit your take profit so you've now made a, a, a nice bit of money there and two percent risk you made 38 pound on that one trade now guys is there anything you want to ask before um we we, we finish up here i just went i'm just showing you a little bit about how how i've been trading this bit's a little been a little bit rushed not as um as detailed as i'd wanted to but um is there any questions that you you've got that i could maybe answer to help you with your trading or anything like that i'll spend an extra five minutes asking some uh, asking answering questions that you have The market's pushed up. Wow, wow, wow. Look what's happened with the market there. See, because it's a buyer's market, you, can, you could actually buy and just and, and, and let it run and leave it for the long term. 
okay? Which broker do you recommend? Um, I actually use um, a broker called IC Markets. Um, IC Markets because um, they have an amazing spread. Um, their spread is so tight, which means that the commissions that they charge is so small. Um, it's amazing. Um, I've used quite a few and I found them, them very good. Um, there's a few other people that, um, that use a few others, Axie Trader and stuff like that. Um, they're also supposedly good as well. So um, you just want to find uh, what's best for you. Um, JAFX, I think that's supposed to be good as well. Um, I know that a lot of people are using that as well. So um, yeah, um, I've not really used them. I've actually just used, um, I've used quite a few. I've used XM.com, I've used Traders Way, I've used um, Vantage FX, and I've used uh, IC Markets and I believe IC Markets has been the best for me in terms of being able to deposit. Um, basically, there's a $250 first deposit that you have to do, but then you can deposit whatever you want, £10, £20, £30, doesn't matter. Um, and, what, and then you have many different ways of depositing as well. You have many different... Um, can you close up? No, your stuff's there. Um, okay, so basically you have many different ways of of um, being able to deposit and withdraw. Um, so, okay. Uh, any other questions, guys? Any other questions at all? Was this helpful? Um, obviously, for most of you, uh, hopefully, you know a little bit about how to trade as well. So, uh, you know, I would be better, but to be honest, with the GBP um, pairs, it's still a little bit, um, it's a little bit more erratic than the other pairs. So, if you look at the other pairs, they're easier to mark up. So I would suggest whoever's brand new, don't try to mark up on the GBP USD straight away. Okay. But um, hopefully you've learned something, whatever it is. Can you check out Euro GBP? Okay. That'll be my last thing I can do. Euro GBP. And I want to delete everything that's on there. If there's anything, I'm going to have a quick look at this, tell you what my thoughts are on the Euro GBP. So first of all, I'll quickly go to the four hour, um, the daily, see what's happening here. Right, the market is on a pretty much a, a slight sideways but downwards slightly. So, on the daily, it's kind of here, it's marking up to there. I'd say that's on the way down. Um, it's on a downtrend for sure. Um, let's go to the four hourly. Now, I'll quickly, I'd mark up this chart. Let's see if I can mark this up quick. Right, so the market was there, so I draw my circle there. Okay, and then I'll also draw my, my, my low point here. It's been there, okay. So then I would say short, it's a short position. Ah, oh, not short, sorry, what have I done here? I would draw my fib to see what's happening. See, it could have been from here. This is 100% retracement from that last high to there. So I'm actually saying, you know what? Since it's there, I would say definitely it's on a sell. Euro GBP is on a sell. And that's actually the 618, which is actually touched now. Uh, I'd sell down to this 618 here. So short position, sell right now with a stop loss of 60 pips, aiming for 100 pips. So just quickly, that's what I'd look for. But let me just quickly see if it's a good time to enter. On the one hourly, I'm going to add something called Bollinger Bands quickly and see whether it's going to touch my lines. Uh, I already touched the line, so it's going to come down from there. Um, that's the moving average um, that I look at. Something that I look at, um, moving average there. And um, So I could get in here with a stop loss actually slightly smaller from here. I'd actually do a 40 pip stop loss. Um, I'll get in right now. I'm aiming for here. Here's the um, here's the details. If you want the coordinates, there's your coordinates. Uh, 40 pips stop loss, 100 pips take profit. There, we, uh, actually, sorry, 100 pips take profit. So there's the entry. Uh, 0 0.7. So that's the entry right now. Um, basically, you know what? Just do 88, 88 stop loss, and 86 six. Oh, oh. yep. There we are. 86 six, 88 is your stop loss. 
that's my trade for today. I'm going to put that on two euro GBP. What time frame do you use for Bollinger Bands? I use one hour. One hour. Uh, best chain, uh, best pairs, pretty much like I would use the NZ pairs. Um, they're quite slow uh, moving. And you, you you know you're not going to get hit by a massive moving market that might kill uh, you know you know it's like quickly move and uh, and cause wicks to happen up and down like GBP does, um, so yeah the GBP USD they're the two strongest markets like so they're you know you know it's like it's crazy but yeah Bollinger Bands basically the way I use Bollinger Bands is on a downward market whenever the market comes and touches this middle uh, moving average it drops down and goes to the edge of this then it always comes back so as it's on its way back you just don't want to get in until it touches the moving average so if you go back and see here it touched here it dropped started coming back up it still dropped it stopped but when it touched again it dropped all right this time it came back up because the market moved so you don't want to just go on uh, on a uh, remember you're also checking the lows and the highs so remember this was the um, this was the high this was the low so it's always going to be a retracement. When that retracement happens and it touching the edge of the Bollinger Bands, you also know, okay, is that the 61.8 as it touched the edge? That's another confirmation. You say, okay, it's touched the edge plus the Bollinger Bands on the edge. It's got to come down from here. It's going to come down. It's on a downtrend, 61.8, Bollinger Band, um, right near the trend line. It's a sell. I'm ready to sell here. Even if the news comes out tomorrow, which is not even big news, it's not going to move the market up past here. If it does, it'll probably come right to there and stop and carry on back down. That's why my stop loss is five pips above that wick there. Okay, I always put my five pips above the last wick that I see to make sure it doesn't um, blow me out uh, with, the, with a little wick push. Um, so yeah, that trade, does everybody caught that trade? That's the trade that you can even put it on your demo. Have a look and see what that does. But I definitely get in on that. 80, 0.88 stop loss. Take profit 0.866. 8660. Okay. That's 100 pips. Take profit from now. That's going to happen. I believe that will happen. I'm on it. I'm getting on it. So again, guys, thanks for your time. Uh, it's just a quick one today. I'm going to do another quick one tomorrow. I think I'm going to do more to do with the marking up the charts and people asking questions tomorrow, eight or nine once again, and um, we'll take it from there, guys. So hopefully this was, was helpful for you. It might be helpful for people that you want to show how we're actually marking up the charts and, and, and making money. And um, again, thanks a lot uh, for, for staying on. And uh, hopefully you guys receive some value from this. Uh, thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.